Fort Triumph, everybody. Today I'm going to show you how to start this game, how to play, what to do, and where to go, how to get a good start. But first, let's take a look at the settings and the features this has. These are the settings. They're really basic. Uh, I would suggest keeping the auto camera on because sometimes you lose track of your troops and you need to see where they are. Also, sound effects are loud. I've turned them down. It runs very, very nice on low spec machines, so you can go at high resolution. Let's take a look at co op. Co op is basically uh, hot seat co op. You play on the same computer, but it's nice because you can choose uh, the crypt or the caverns and you can set up some AI also. Skirmish mode allows you to go ahead and play against the AI, but today we're going to do the campaign. And it basically starts in the human kingdom in the grasslands. So we're going to play it on classic level. Is It's challenging, but it's not, not too hard, not too easy. So if you're uh, kind of familiar with these kind of games, that will work out fine. If you're not familiar with it, play it on easy. If you're really ready for hardcore, try it on classic. If you can beat that, then go to advance uh, the legendary mode. Hit escape to pass this. Goblin invasion. It's always the goblins, you know. And here we go. So the first thing that you want to do in the beginning is take a look at the map here. It's turn base. Somewhere on this map is going to be an AI, and he's going to be in the color blue. You have a couple of strategies. You can work on your area and build it up and then go out. But if you play it like an RTS, what you should do is gather as many resources as you can, as early as you can, and then go invade his resources, take over his resources, deny him of the land, because the AI can build armies pretty fast. And if uh, you're not up to it and he has more territory, he'll outproduce you, just like an RTS game. Let's take a look at the castle here. Click on that, left click on this. Castle, the features are, you can build a city hall, which will give you more production here. You want to get the citadel, but in order to get the citadel, since it's locked, is you have to do the first mission. These missions are kind of cool. They're like little raids where you got to go through these uh, different steps to get the boss guy at the end. University is really, really good, but you're going to need this here. You're going to need some more magic. We have two already. So what you can do is check to see what you have on the uh, play field come back here but I would really really advise getting the university the reason why the university is important is because 10% XP is a good amount and the more XP you get the faster you level up the faster you, you can beat tougher monsters you want to make it you want to play against that edge there uh, as for these here the guild items you get I would get the inventory slots a little later this one you need to get the university two uh, right here uh, this one uh, is good, but I would try to get armor first because look at the price difference. 180 versus 240. It's not too far apart in terms of price. So I would go ahead and get that one. Those are the most important ones you can get. You want to get more DPS, but at the same time, you need more survivability. So now we're on to the heroes here. Take a look at these heroes and always be checking this every week of gameplay because they'll have these traits like tenacious bloodthirsty this guy has bloodthirsty this is really 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 good so he gets one power for every enemy killed if you can afford this guy he's good to get and he may even be good to get right now there's one trait called debater which allows him to repose or automatically attack whoever attacks him that's very very valuable if you ever see somebody with that i would get that so this is good we got to the end of the week. If we get nobody else, we can go ahead and get him. But see, he uses this currency, the purple coin. You have a choice. You can upgrade the city, which gives you uh, 250 per turn. It might be good to get this here. And in the amount of turns, he requires that. So let's go ahead and do this. But before we do that, let's take a look on the field here. This will give you magic, so you don't have to worry about magic. Uh, accuracy for the next round. Corrupt magic. Haven't seen that in a while. This guy, he's a little tough to get. And there's some more here. You can look at the, the guys here. This will probably be your first battle. This can be tough because there's two priests in there. Wizard, way too tough. This guy, he's okay to get the goblins. You'll get a chest there. We'll show have more coins. So it looks like we have coins in there and in there. And we can upgrade our accuracy at the same time. This is too hard now. This is mission one that you want to get. So let's go ahead and go back to here. Let's go ahead and buy this because we will have more coins later. So it puts this down here. And now we're off to fight a battle. So we can get more accuracy. 
get more magic and then knock this guy out you want to kind of set up so you're going around the same area so if we get the accuracy let's take the accuracy here right click to plus 10 accuracy now you can see over here any good this is good see now we came over here this is good because he's got a coin box behind him no good yes good uh, okay And I don't know what the corrupt match. We can't get to that. Anyway, let's go ahead and fight him. First fight. We need some EXP. And he's only a one difficulty. So he probably has weakling skeleton. Now, there's only so many classes you can play. You have a barbarian. You have a paladin. Magic user. And a ranger. Two ranged and two melee classes. Here we go. So this is your battlefield. This is what it looks like. You can scroll in and out with the mouse wheel. Here's where you guys are, the bad guys now. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Take a look on the right. There are only four strengths, so this is quite good. What you can do in this game that's really nice, you can take advantage of the physics of the game. So you can use the physics like knocking trees over them on top of them, which is really, really good. You can also kick them into each other, but the way this is set up, we're not going to get a lot of those. So we're going to have to just basically take these guys down. So my magic guy... What kind of shots? 53%. Nothing too good. Let's see what the ranger's got. He's got this thing that pulls. This is a grappling hook. It pulls things onto people. So he can maybe... Uh, let's see. Nope, he's not in range to do any pull. So we'll have to move him up. Let's go with the magic user. And these guys are pretty wimpy, like I tell you. We're going to try to topple something on him or knock something back. Which would mean we get over about here let's see using the whirlwind good it knocks it back just like that 74 percent pick the highest percentage one and keep them off your back nope that goes that way that goes that way so this is this one and there we go so one down so now one down five to go so now that he's done this he can go we're gonna put him back here you don't always want to put him behind a tree because if you get you'll learn there's some magic casters that will fire the same whirlwind as you so you don't want them behind a tree you got to be careful about that let's get our ranger out there he can do the pull shot but as you can see none of these you can pull onto them. maybe that think rock over there let's put him in here let's see if we can reach it i think it'll do it it will, 100%. Yeah, got him. That's what makes this game so fun. Let's go ahead and look at the inventory while we're at it. Let's talk about these characters. Okay, so this one has a consistent trait. 5% chance to hit for every successive hit. This guy's got tenacious. This guy has got impressionable. And basically that's all it is. These are inventory slots. This is your inventory. Early in the game, you only need one inventory slot to be good now we've got a bunch of these guys out here and we've got to be careful he's only got 12 hit points so what we want to do is either outright kill one of these guys which we can't really do because as you can see here we're not in range where it's one ap right here and we're not close enough to kick him we only have so many ap's so in that case let's just go ahead and put him here oh great take the long way why don't you and brace for impact Yep, he only hit me for one. That's a good thing I have Brace up. He's going to hit me again. This is what tanking's all about. Taking some hits. Better he get hit than the other guys. Good, this guy is not in range to hit. Good. Okay. So now we've got an interesting situation. See how these guys are lined up as such? What I want to do here is let's go ahead and get the magic user in there to just use a standard attack 100 percent just reduce the numbers and we're going to try to line the tank to do one of these shots here or take out two of these guys at the same time let's get this guy he should get a hundred percent shot on this guy there it is got him now it comes down to Mr. Tank here. 
how can, what you want to do is get behind him and kick them that way. So let's do this. One thing I should point out is the nice thing about a kick, or if they get hit by these, they get some units can get stunned. You want to stun them because if they're stunned, they can move, but they cannot attack you. So let's go ahead and do a kick like that. And notice that one guy is stunned right there. So he can run around, but he can't do anything. So that's fine. So let's go ahead and uh, move up here. So in case he moves up, we have uh, a lot of chance to catch up to him. He may try to run. Okay, so he didn't do anything. Now, for the kill, you want to decide which character you would level up because this one kill will add to this experience. If you level the mage up, that's really good. There's some really good spells that they can get. It's 82%. But if you level the tank up, this is also good to do. So let's just go. He'll get the experience from that. There's a lot of good things he can get. It's important to have a really good tank. So A plus on the kill. Next thing I want to do is I want to talk a little bit about what the later game looks like because you have to have an idea what the later game is. Let's say coin chest. There we go. 300 coins or 25 experience. And 300 coins would be good because we could use that. But at the same time, we're making coins pretty fast at 250 uh, each time. So the experience might level them. Let's go. And no, it didn't. And let's see here. How much experience oh so close look at that so so close could have leveled it up but no sometimes you never know you just get really really close like that so let's get out here we're gonna go try to go to the end of the week now what you want to do is look at your path here see like this path will allow you to go here it could offer or build your yourself a path to another area and you want to get those areas some areas like this are so hard you know the enemy can't come in here because he's gonna have to fight this guy right here but this area may be an area where they can go through let's get this and the turn you got once you get to day seven it starts a new week uh let's see and he's too hard let's pick this up accuracy for the next battle most likely the enemy is out in the left side of the map doubtful it'll be back here let's check our castle and let's see the fort has been capital has been built we need how much for this? 650 on that. The hero, uh, bloodthirsty, he'll be around 375. We can. We need a little more. Yeah, one more turn, and we'll have enough to buy him. So I would get get definitely get him. Uh, later on, we'll be able to add him in. So this guy here will offer something. Let's pick up all the free stuff first. Free potion, gravity vial. Um, draws units and objects towards the center of a large radius. This is really, really good. Slime grenade is really nice to have too, but look at the ones that are uncommon. This is common. This is pretty good too. You may need this for a tank, so they're really good. Uh, it's always a tough choice. Sometimes there's one really good ones, but gravity vial, uh, I think it's going to be nice because you don't know what the, the radius is, but it could be good. What's this guy? One and a half. Let's uh, explore a little further. Now look at how many we have here. Let's go back to the castle. From here we can go ahead and hire him if we want him. He's still there, very rare. And up here we still need 650, we're almost there. I'm gonna go and let's purchase this guy here and keep him down here. So the next guy has a com uncommon one, but this guy is way, way better. So you got to invest in these characters early on. There's a sack. There you go. Look at that. Good thing we spent it because, boing, we got more. Probably could take him down, but let's keep exploring. This guy's too hard. Get these free ones because if the enemy breaks through into your territory, they're going to pick up all of these and you will miss out on them. This is too hard, so he's blocking the way. This is part of the story mission. And let's go get this here. Get it before the other guy gets it. This, it doesn't say. This is, these can be good sometimes. There you go, that's story mission. You can get the coins over there. You can get the dead corpse. Look at these goodies. Get it while you can. If you don't get it, they're gonna get it. And that means you won't have it. And there was one more right behind me. Bag of coins, got it. While we do that, let's go back and quickly check what can we buy. 
So now, look at this, isn't it better? Now you got some choices. This is a really good choice to get, the infirmary, because what it does is it increases the maximum health points of units by two. And let me tell you, that is huge. It costs a thousand, the university costs 650. We could get to it, but we don't know if we're gonna run into combat yet. So both of these are really good to get. They're really, really good. Uh, I would go for this, this will affect your battle in a major, major way. Also want to mention that when you play this, you can do things like, um, let me get that. Now this is something, you can do things like, you can keep restarting the game until you get a good roll, so to say. Okay, suffer so three damage at the start for two days, but you get this, not worth it. Um, I guarantee you, definitely not worth it. Nobody's going this way. You can go this way, there's some more things like this. And as we get closer, we're gonna find out. Then, as you can see, we've got this, this, and this. Get it or forget it. Okay, watch these days. You got a couple days left. And we're denying him. Look at that. 100 magic. This is not bad. He's one and a half. We could probably take him. Bag of coins. We got more broken wagon. You're going to get more stuff down here. We're down to lower right. There's probably nothing here. We're just going to get all the goodies. Okay. Also, another good thing about having heroes back there is that if he attacks your base, he's got defense there. This is good. Okay, hourglass. Look at this. Look at lowers the, the cooldowns by one. This is really good. It's good to get free stuff like this. How can you access this? You can go ahead and put it in here. So if you look at the traits they've got, well, with this guy, would you put it in there? His, his things, like he doesn't really have anything. You could put it on. This would be a good character because the cooldown is the uh, whirlwind. The whirlwind is very useful at this level. So let's go ahead and give it to her. Simply do that. And for this guy, you can give him this potion like this. See how I did that? Let's see what do we got. Too difficult. Don't know about him. This if he's guarding a cage, he's too hard. So we have a choice. We can fight this one, or we can go on. But before we do that, let's talk about the later game and what's important let me first by go first start by going over here what's really really important is the items you get later on in the game you're gonna get other skills let me show you this the skill tree we'll get to that advanced skills in fact let's fight this battle here and when we level up I'm gonna show you So, okay, this is a little tougher battle here. This guy here, he's got 28 hit points. That's a lot. We need to keep him um, knocked back and stunned. He also has this thing here. He's protected from stun. But if you stun him twice, you get him the second time. These guys, little boogers, you gotta watch out because they can paralyze you. So he's only got three of them. They're not bad. So this battle is against Big Boy and it's uh, three little guys there. Our tank can go up against him, no problem, but let's try to keep this guy stunned and or else kill these guys off and push him back so let's see what we have here if we hit this this is let's go whirlwind against actually it'd be good to put whirlwind against him 85 percent 75 percent we have to move so let's go ahead and move the this guy here our master user we're gonna go whirlwind 93 percent at least if we don't stun him, we'll just knock him back. Now we leveled up. Let me show you now. So we did level up. Let's look at our abilities. Check what they are. Common, common, cross, class capability. Let me talk about it. This is a damage over time. Electrocute, it's okay to use. But sometimes you want the mobs killed faster and it doesn't do a whole lot of damage. Curse arrow is, is not bad at all. It reduces the power for 50%. But the fire blast one is really good. Later on, you're gonna get mobbed by lots and lots of things. Like these spiders may all mob us. So it's gonna be uh, this one here. And you can upgrade the next time and uh, it'll work really nice. Okay, so this guy's done. Let's get the this guy here. You may notice now he's next to a tree. We can pull the tree over on top of him. We wanna put this guy about here. It's a little difficult. He's got quite a ways to go. You need to go one action, leave two action points left. Let's hope we can pull it in the right direction. Uh, I don't know if we can. 
Let's see. Yes, we can. Here we go. See the arrow? The, the, the blue arrow? And it knocked it over. Now we stunned him. So see, we stunned him. And now he's looking at the hit points are coming off. It's important to take him down. Let's go to new abilities. Once again, common, common, common. Fire arrow, it's okay. Curse arrow's okay. You don't necessarily have to get another skill if you don't want to. You can go back and save it for this. But let's go ahead and get something. This will cause burning. Um, uh, damage caused, it'll burn over time, which is nice. The smoke bomb is okay. It stops range, guys. Uh, nine tiles. So look at the range on It's really important to get. I'll just get the, let's see, the power, the fire intensity. So this is probably like one damage each, uh, each turn. It's not a big deal. This would be better, the curse arrow. Because anything that you can use to debuff them is uh, really what you want. Now we got this guy here. So now the problem is we can't hit anything from where we are at all. So nothing we can do. Let's just uh, keep him back here and uh, just wait it out. You know, we can do the gravity thing, but I would save this to see. Actually, uh, let's go ahead and do this here. I'm going to try to draw. It shows the area like that. Okay, so we can draw them in and they'll hit each other. Let's see if there's any way we can. Yeah, this would be good. Like that. Boink! And that's it. And I leveled up. So that when I leveled up, it meant that I got experience for the damage. And I used it just to show you guys what it does. Now, once again, common, common, common. This thing paralyzes a unit. 14 tiles. I like that. That's really good. Pacify. This is okay cancels a reaction of a single target but you can actually sometimes you want them to react to you so they go blinded because you're gonna have a ranger has ability that you can get later that'll make them miss automatically and that's something you want so once again we can use this here and paralyze so what would you do paralyze this guy. there you go he's paralyzed so nobody can do they can't do any attacks at all because they're all stunned he's paralyzed right there and in addition, let me show you, there's one more thing here you can move. You can grab that and you can select like a rock, let's say if you want to. And um, left click, you can move the tree actually. That's nice. Oops, that's wrong. <laughs> okay, see he can't do anything, he can't do anything. You're just lining up to get killed. And you watch, I can probably move the mage in there. Use my nice big fireball that I just got, but there's not there are not enough action points to do it so once again we're limited in what we can do we got to just shoot these guys down 74 79 we're going to keep them together so we can uh double kick them we can kick them, and try to kick them. that means we probably got him yep he's dead let's get this uh pally put him in uh position and let's get him do i have anything i can kick at him First thing you want to look at, can you kick? I can kick this at him, but it won't get this guy. So let's go here. Or I could just slash him for big damage. Let's see if I can kick this guy and it'll stun him. We'll try it. It'll probably kill him outright. Oh. There, got him. So you killed one, you killed two birds, one stone. And it happens to be that he, the troll guy, should be stunned. Let's hope. Okay, so now we have this. We have the curse arrow here. Let's go ahead and hit him with the curse arrow. This will reduce his power by 50%. So now he's cursed right here. He's not stunned. He uh, evaded the stun. And let's go ahead and hit this for the next turn. He's going to paralyze. Okay, that's okay. It means we can't move, but we can still fight. Now his damage is 50%. Look at that. It would have hit me for 8 before. Is that crazy or what? So that's why the curse worked out over there. We can hit him for four or five damage. Let's go for big boy. Got him. That's down four. And we want to level this. Let's see, he can take him down. Actually, we'll get him go like this. Get this guy 100%. He'll get the kill. Got him. And the last guy is whoops this guy here let's just 
So there you go. Now, a lot of times you want to stay back. You don't always want to run up there because there are sometimes monsters that you can't see. They're hidden away. So in that case, stay back, set up your defense, and um, pick off things as they come. There you go. Got that. And this is nice. You, uh, using a potion restores three hit points. So you can get a bonus to using a, uh, a potion. So let's go ahead and put it on him because he'll need later on he'll get a potion. And once again, check out where they are in experience. Four, nine, fifteen. Look at this. You can see the difference in experience. And you want to level these guys up. So as we move up there, take a look at the map. We can't go this way. The other guy probably can't go that way. Clear this part of the map. You have no way to go through here. This way is pretty tough. There may be a way around the back here. So now that I've cleared all that out and you know the bad guy is not going to come through here for a while, you want to head back this way. But before you do that, check the castle once again. Let's check what you can buy. Ding! Look at that. You got the university. You've been managing your money. You got that. Uh, let's see, any more here? No, these are basically the same here. So you got this capital early. You got the university. Let's build more. 10% experience and then when you go into here if we free the first guy we can go ahead and build this and if we build this we can increase the party size by four at the same time as you get better characters start adding them into here so you can go ahead and uh, get more let's go ahead and show you what happens when we end the turn okay so we got one more day until we end the turn uh, he's too tough let's get to the question mark this one, same thing. It's you don't want that. Let's check this. This is uh, this is no, he's no good. Let's see any more we can take up. This is actually good. The beet farm. If you can kill this guy, because the nice thing about it is you'll get even more production on a beet farm. And uh, this one, you can kill these two guys here. But what I would do is try to find a way out here. Sometimes there's a free way to get all the way out there. We've got pretty good beet farm production, so I'd take this guy, get the beet farm. Then you, the next turn, you can probably get this guy and get this. So it's one, two turns. Pick up this here. And whenever this gets down to one and a half or two, you can go for that. And that means you probably have to get these two kills to level up to get this. Move all the way here. Hit the tree. See what the tree gives you and try to circle around the back. It's He's got to be on this side here. And then start invading the enemy's territory. Now finally, let's just take a look at the skill tree and look at each one and show you something here if you upgrade this when you hit level three you reduce the cooldown uh shackles also comes cause some damage so you can put damage on them and later on when you get all the way to 15 uh no longer cost any action points some of these are pretty good so you got to look ahead to see what does uh your thing do here the kick is nice you know it's easy to upgrade and you want to be always planning ahead. Look at this. What else will this do? Inflicts slime and applies 50 negative 50 evade. That's good. This is pretty good. Grapple hook allows choosing in which direction to pull. That's sweet. I'm telling you. Because later on, you're going to want to use as many of the physics capabilities you can as possible. And this uh, cannot miss. So it's it's okay. you know. But I would, I would work towards getting the grappling hook up. Let's talk about the fireball here. And this is a, shoot, what does this do? It makes a bigger fireball. This is a tornado here. It pushes way up to three targets in a line. Wow. So this is pretty good, but it doesn't always come up in a line. So um, uh, there's some features like this. Let's take a look at his. You saw the uh, shackles and then the hammer like that. Now let's go ahead and go back and quickly look at um, the castle. Let's take a look at the other character here whoops and here let's look at his skills oh he has bloodthirsty this is good yep let's look at his skills here so if you upgrade this um incapacitates the targets which is really good this kind of character what i found is good about him is you get this character they're pretty fast there's one thing it's like uh some dash thing where it can run up there you want to get this guy in the middle of guys and he can really tear him up. He hits double for whatever he has. He affects times two, so his base damage is three. You start upgrading that and all that, and he can tear things down, and then you get him set up. Hopefully he'll get um, 
you can get him a skill that'll uh, allow him to, to hit back whenever he's hit and then he'll go ahead and hit stuff it's really great character it's a what they call damage per second dps class very very nice character to have so anyway hope you guys like this if you'd like to see a play through this and see more of it go ahead and leave a comment uh let me know and i'll play through this i i've played through a bunch of it already and it's a lot of fun i gotta say one thing there's a lot of replayability you can play these missions different because the world is created different every time so there's different kind of challenges and you don't always get the best uh gear uh, or traits with your character so you never know what you're going to get for example sometimes you don't get these turn out not so good and uh, it plays a little different each time so lots of replayability hope you guys like this and once again thanks for watching